What will you do to unlock innovation? In today's fast-paced world, innovation might not be enough. Tomorrow's pioneers of change will need to be agile, able to adapt, and committed like never before. Your host, Santa Vending, invites you to listen in and join business leaders from around the world as they share their visions for success in our future business challenges. Welcome to Mind Innovation. I'm your host, Sana Vending. I'm always excited to learn. And in today's podcast, we'll talk about company culture, core values, and future work. I want to welcome Jared Allman. He's a culture collaborator, and he's also a compliance solution account executive at Skillsoft. So welcome, Jared. I'm so excited to, to have you here today. I, I'm super stoked, too. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So tell me about your, your passion, right? Because you have a lot of passions about the, the culture and the culture matters and, and call values and behavior. So, so what's, what's behind it? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I sell legal compliance content to organizations and environmental safety and health content. And uh, I've met with CHROs and VPs of safety. And over the years, I've noticed that there was this, uh, this gap, uh, some sort missing from what the core values are from what I read and understand that they post and, and how they're actually living those core values out. And so I see it as a huge opportunity to kind of um, have those conversations with them and, and talk to them about maybe perhaps doing things different to improve the culture. Uh, so yeah, that, and that's something that I'm really, really passionate about and I enjoy doing. So has there been any history, if you go back just for the last 10 years, how the core values have changed in the different companies, if you go down memory lane? Yeah, I think um, when you talk about core values evolving over time, um, the pandemic really threw a huge curveball most recently. But prior to that, more and more leaders were, were buying into the idea of leading with empathy. Um, and I think it's a really critical value. Um, yeah. But the problem was a lot of those leaders say they lead with empathy, but direct action and showing the how to their teams often fell short. And now because of the craziness of the pandemic, that line is starting to be a lot more defined in terms of leaders leading uh, with empathy. Okay. So with the whole core values and, and also the behavior, right? How you actually are living it out. I think we all have our private values um, and hopefully as well when, you, when you're working, there's some similarity there at your work. So you, you will be a good, a good match there. Um, how, how do you measure the employee engagement in, in, in an office or in an organization? Um, what, what's the best practice to do there? Because there's a lot of different ways of doing it. Yeah, that's a great question. So a lot of organizations are leveraging survey tools right now to, in, to, to, to see the level of employee engagement one of the things that that which is which is fine to do that there's some area of uh, margin for error in those if you will because um, depending on what the temperature is with employees engaging in surveys the data could be skewed and so if you have an employee that that says hey i participated in eight surveys and i never see the results of those surveys of um, and then i never see how the, the answer in the surveys get implemented to directly affect our culture, that's probably not a good use of, of anyone's time to put out those surveys. So what, what I'm seeing slowly starting to happen is that organizations that are really people centric, they show that by being involved in employee resource groups. So what happens is, you know, you'll create an employee resource group of an initiative that's really important to the employees. So an example of that could be diversity, equity, inclusion, perhaps it's, it's a women of, of color that, that have a group, and then they get executive sponsorship of this particular group, create uh, an agenda for the meeting with action items that they can give to the executive. So they have a stakeholder at the table in terms of seeing what's important to them. And then conversely, um, that stakeholder can then leave some action items with the ERG. Um, so that, that, that just kind of gives a real representation of um, employee engagement. And then it can be measured based on the actions that come out of those meetings. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So what are the some of the question, or maybe not the questions, but what are some of the outcome that you've seen, you know, where you are involved in the different organizations of the engagement? Is it more learning? Is it 
um, being the hybrid now that you can work remote, you know, what, what's the top um, interest right now that you're seeing that that's happening? Yeah, so definitely the learning component is a huge differentiator right now for organizations that are looking to retain their top talent um, and also to recruit in the space, recruit in whatever market they're in. And so having a very robust learning and development program that provides content to help individuals grow is really, really critical. And, and, and is, uh, it speaks to your earlier question about employee engagement. That is another tool to actually, um, you know, verify that there's a high level of employee engagement. Yeah. So I talked on previous podcasts to say, you know, where the, the, the skill set is the fuel for innovation and, and you really need that in the, in the different organizations. So, so how do you go out as an organization? Because the world is changing. Um, there is task that's getting more automated or being replaced. Um, then there will, of course, there'll be no need, new needs as well in, in the organization. So how do you prepare a company or an organization for this transformation? That's a great question. So the digital transformation is real. I think the organizations that understand that really leverage a couple of components, but one, it really comes down to just listening to their customers or their clients of what's important to them and what changes within their organizations in which they partner with. But it also, it, it's really critical that they listen to their employees what matters to them, what tools do they need to be competitive in the market? How can we align maybe our learning and development content that we provide to give our employees, to, to give them that competitive advantage in the market to keep them ahead of the pace? So I think it really comes down to just listening. Yeah. So is the learning culture, is that a, is that a core value? Or, or how, is that, how is that combined in the values? Yeah, I think learning um, learning could be a core value, it, in my opinion, and I don't have any data to support this, but I think learning can be a core value, provided that leadership demonstrates to their people that it's that it's valued. Because I don't believe that um, culture starts at the top. I think culture is really it, it's really magical when it's somewhere in the middle. So what I mean by that is leaders have the vision of, of the mission and, and they have an idea of the core values. But if you don't have any of the employees to buy into those core values, what good are they? And so if you have the employees that see you live your core values and your, and your mission and they buy into it, that middle is where the culture really excels. And so if you have a leader that values learning and that it exhibits that within the team, then I think absolutely learning can be a core value. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I really, I like, I like the learning. <laughs> um, what about the, all the titles, you know, if you go to LinkedIn, you can see that's, that's been different trends, right? A couple of years ago, you had yeah. to be ninja or to be the expert. You called yourself a ninja, maybe not you, but, <laughs> but you saw that. Um, I've seen that the, the HR title now have been changed, not everywhere, of course, but to people and culture. So is it just following the trend, what you see on, on people's titles? Is it just following what's happening right now in the moment and maybe looking into the future or what, what, what's going on here? I think, um, well, I think with HR people, they get, they get a bad rap. You know, when, when you talk to people that don't deal with HR regularly, it, the people in HR have a negative connotation with the title. Yeah. And so the shift in the trend, and that's a good word to use, the, a trend, is to change it, remove the HR because it has this negative connotation yeah. and put people in the title or put culture in the title. Um, but at the end of the day, the job functionality is the same. I think where it differs is when organizations actually hire a chief people officer versus uh, you know, a chief resource officer. And that chief people officer, they're the ones that own the people component of the business in terms of aligning learning to the organization, being really in tuned with um, employee engagement being a big component of, 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 of what they're responsible for, where the HR people um, are more, um, you know, they, they deal, in, what, in my experience, they deal more with kind of uh, the benefit package and total rewards, things yeah. along those lines of running the business. 
it gets bogged down when those people are expected to do the jack of all trades, yeah. right? Where they're in charge of performance reviews, but they're also in charge of learning and development. Um, so I think organizations that understand the value in having a true chief people officer and giving them true autonomy to lead that component of the business, those are the ones that are going to be really, really successful in the future of work. Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's changing right now? Because we're still in, in the pandemic. It's been more than a year. Um, more than more than almost yeah long 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 time so what's what have you seen what is the challenges right now with the organization with the core values and the company culture maybe it's more the company culture because we were in the office then all out as much as we could depending of course of your industry being remote uh, now slowly coming in again um, so what what are some of the the big challenges that organizations have right now yeah, so that's a great question. So um, a lot of organizations that are going back into the workplace are, are kind of behind the eight ball in terms of rolling out informative policies of what returns the workplace looks like. Um, so starting with a policy that's uniform that says, if you come into the work or if you're in a hybrid environment, here's, here's what it would look like. So organizations are trying to figure that out. And then the, that's one component. Another component is if we say you have to come back to the workplace and you have to be vaccinated, okay, who, who handles that data? There's a lot of data privacy concerns with vaccine records. You know, if you work in California, there's a California Consum Consumer Protection Act. The employees need to understand that if they work in California and their employer says, we need your, your uh, vaccine card, we're gonna keep it on file. Um, and then there's another another law. It's mainly for Europe and GDPR. A similar thing would apply if you work in Europe and your employer asks for your um, vaccine card. You you want to make sure that you understand the the rules around uh, data privacy. So I think those are really important. But the other piece of returning to the to to work that is kind of a huge trend right now. And I don't like to use the word trend because I think it's something that it. It's not going to go away no. in, in the long term because of the pandemic, but th this idea of providing psychological safety in the workplace really goes back to the leaders being uh, leading with empathy and being people centric. So providing a psychological workplace where your employees can come in and express how they're feeling, what they like, what they don't like, and then being able to take that from a leadership perspective and understand um, you know, how can I make this a better work environment for my employee? Or how can we have a tough conversation about looking at different accommodations where before and, and leaders would be like, this is how it is. Punch yeah. the clock. See you on Friday. Have a great weekend. Right. So I think the pandemic really changed us in that in that mindset where the, the employee employers that get that um, are going to be not only richer in terms of having top talent stay within their organization. They're going to be able to uh, recruit top talent because people are going to want to come work for an organization that has that as a core value. Um, and it's just, it just, it's a good place to be from a leadership perspective to really lead with empathy. Yeah. I've, I've seen, and just, you know, reading articles and, and blog posts and, and just also my own experience, um, the, the trust aspect, right? Suddenly you're not in the office. Uh, and with the different teams, how do you know they're working? Um, and it all goes back to, to trust because it, just because you're sitting in front of your computer and waiting for, yeah, okay, now it's time, now I can go, uh, doesn't mean that you actually are a top talent or a high performer. Um, I think it's so important yeah. that, that you, you create some flexibility um, because we all have different life and it is that work balance um of course i think that, i think the last year here we've been testing as well right because you have to balance the whole family at home <laughs> and mm -hmm. with schools if yeah. you have kids are in schools um but but it has i don't think we will go back to what it was that's that's just i think we've been it's been yeah. pushed so much on technology it's been pushed so much on on how you're working together and communicating we're still learning to get there to be much better in communicating when we're not in the same office. Um, but yeah, I, time, right? I agree with you a thousand percent. I don't see it going back to the normal work environment, yeah. 
um, because so many organizations in certain industries that have the ability to work from home have proven now over a long period of time that they can be just as productive, if not more yeah. than work in a work from home environment than an office environment. Yeah. And I think what you'll see happening is that if, if leaders and employ, employers don't value that and they push out these recommendations that you have to come to the office, yeah. then and the employees are gonna say, I wanna see what my value is in the market because that's really important to me to have the flexibility. You know, you mentioned being home with kids and going to school. That's important to a lot of people now more than ever. And so if you enforce that and take away that, that, that freedom, that component of uh, one piece of that person that's really important to them, then why would they show any loyalty to the organization? Um, you know, so they're gonna be leaving a mass exodus if, if, if organizations take that aggressive approach, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. What about so, you know, looking at, at future work or, or the core values, what's what's the most important thing you can do in your space? I think um, the most important thing for me to do in my space is to listen to what what's important to leaders um, and then uh, just to continue to provide awareness around how leading with empathy matters and how it impacts all aspects of the business. It's not just in a one-on-one -on -one situation. It, it has a lasting effect on the entire culture. Um, I think that, that that's really, really important. Do you, like, do you look outside of, of US as well to get inspired or see what's going on in, in other countries? Yeah, so you know, that's interesting. So a lot of the research that I do is, um, is based on North America regulatory standards. And, but because of, um, and actually, you know, Clubhouse, that's how I met you. Yeah. Uh, Clubhouse has really opened up my eyes to a larger um, market of people in, in different cultures of how their work environments are completely different than they, than they are here in North America in, in the regulatory standards. So yeah, I mean, that Clubhouse is, um, you know, some people have different views on it, but for me, yeah. it is one of the best learning platforms that's free because yeah. um, you can hear, you know, there's different rooms for, for whatever, but the way I leverage it as is a learning tool to really meet and connect with people that, wow, I never thought of it from that perspective, or I never knew you could do that in Scotland. Like, yeah, something I learned yesterday. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Looking in, yeah, in different countries or different industries, if, if that can give you so much value um, to, to look at it from a different angle. So, okay. Last question. So what would you tell yourself 10 years ago or 20? You depend. <laughs> oh, man. So I probably would have told myself. Um, so there, it's no, there's no hiding behind this. I'm a ginger, right? And so we're like historically known to have a short fuse and just go, go, go and not really soak things in and slow down and be, and be a good listener. And I think if I, and that's something that I'm continuously working on and also trying to learn more about what makes people um, tick and, and how to help those people if I can. So I think I would have, I would tell myself, hey man, like really hone in on developing and sharpening your listening skill set because that will serve you tenfold regardless of what you do in your life. Where 10 years ago, I was more about not hearing what people were saying, but I wasn't really listening. That's a, that's a good one. I, I, I can join that one. Um, it's, it's no, but it's so important to, to listen, um, and, and just make sure as well that you understood it. Right. So you actually are opening up after to have a dialogue because you can speak one way, but it has to be a two way, um, dialogue. So you make sure that, that you are on the same page or you, or you understand each other. Maybe you don't agree, but, but just that you understand each other and respect each other. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, thank you so much for, for being on my podcast today. I, I really enjoyed it to, to look at the core values. I think it, it ties in in so many places uh, with the skill set and the learnings. Um, and we, it's so important not to forget the, the company culture. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. 
If you enjoy this podcast and if you like to hear more, please subscribe wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Until then, stay curious and keep learning.